Welcome to Hop On Calls, where I, your host, Kevin Hop, make live cold calls every other week on LinkedIn with a special guest. Tune in to hear what it's actually like to talk to strangers and try and set a first meeting. This podcast is designed for any outbound sales pro that's looking to get better. Let's jump right into this week's episode and see what we can learn. This episode is brought to you by Connect and Sell, your live conversation weapon. Teams that use Connect and Sell average five to 10 times more live conversations every day with their prospects. As a cold calling consultant, I've used every platform out there and, you know, simply put, Connect and Sell is the Cadillac of the sales acceleration space. If you haven't tried it out, your team can try it for free by clicking the link in the show notes below. Here we are. Welcome back to another edition of Hop On Calls. I'm your host, Kevin Hop. As always, I'm a guy who wears shirts like this of dudes lifting phones up. I really am about that life. Joined today from across the pond in London town, Antoine Martin. Say what's up, man. What is up? What's happening? Good to be here, man. Good to be here. Great to have you, Antoine. I've had, uh, what, I think uh, you're the third European guest (laughs) on Hop On Calls, which is exciting. Um, Yeah. I heard you're you're a a football fan. What's your football team? Manchester United. Um, Manchester. We're officially officially not European anymore, right? We're back to being plain old British. So, uh, (laughs) so, yeah, I'm just sat sat in London. And uh, this is good to be on the show, man. I've, I've watched a lot of you. So uh, I know what you're all about, right? That's right. I'm all about cold Bench, calling. Bench the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've been following you for a long time too. Uh, what's, what's your background for the folks out there that might not know Antoine? Um, so, yeah, I'm an 18-year sales veteran, been cold calling for every single one of those 18 years. Um, I've uh, been full cycle rep for uh, pretty much every single role I've ever been in. And uh, I'm now, um, I now own a, an outbound agency focusing on GTM motions and outbound sales development, uh, specifically for um, kind of small to medium enterprises. Right on, right on. The guy who's uh, been there and done that for a lot of time. It's pretty rare to find people that are. It's pretty rare to find people that are like still in outbound eighteen years later. Yeah. Um... You've, you've got you've got to love doing it, right? You've got to, I think, enjoy being in the conversation. I think you've got, you've got to enjoy um, being on the hunt. Um, and I think that that takes a certain skill set and it's something that you're always working on. And if you're up for doing that, then this is definitely a good place for you to be. Right on, man. Right on. Well, I'm excited to make some dials with you today. Uh, our show... <coughs> As always, is sponsored by Connect and Sell, your live conversation weapon. It's not a tool, it's a weapon. It's gonna allow us to get into a lot of conversations in a short period of time. Connect and Sell is a platform that makes this super easy for sales reps. If you have not checked out Connect and Sell, you need to. I will put a link in the uh, in the chat here so you can check out Connect and Sell for free. But with no further ado, Antoine, let's talk a little bit about who we're calling today so the audience has some context. Who are you calling today? So I am calling a list of tech and software companies, private equity backed, and I'm uh, actually calling on behalf of Connect and Sell today. Calling on behalf of Connect and Sell on a Connect and Sell sponsored show. I love that. I'm going to be calling for myself, which is Hop Consulting Group. Uh, What I talk about these days is calling culture. I like to find organizations that are saying things like, man, I wish that my reps could have more live conversations. Man, my reps are having a lot of conversations. They're not converting a lot of those conversations. Man, I think cold calling is dead. I'm not exactly sure if we should be investing in outbound conversations. If you have those business problems, I'm trying to talk to you about that. That's what I want to do. So I'm going to be ripping on my list. You're going to be ripping on your list. Uh, There's a bit of overlap there, though, right? Okay. There's a bit of overlap there, which is what I like. A bit of what? There's a bit of overlap there between you selling your consultancy services and what Connect and Sell actually do from a oh, software absolutely. standpoint. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Connect and Sell partner as well. So uh, yeah. I'll most likely be bringing Connect and Sell into these opportunities if they're not already using Connect and Sell. Like that would be, that'd be really cool. 
um, a big, a big, like I, I talk about like what I do in really three areas. It's people process and technology, right? People need training. There needs to be a process for them to go about what they're doing. It can't be random. It can't be, Hey, just go figure it out. And the technology piece is actually, I, I argue a must, right? I only work yeah. with people that are investing in technology because, the metaphor I always use is, you know, outbound's kind of like rolling a, a, a stone up a hill. You could do it by hand. You sure can. Or we could teach people how to push the button on machines that move stones, right? And that's yeah. what I want to yeah. do. We've we got to get people out of the mindset of the, the way to succeed is punching 10 digits on the phone faster and get them into the mindset of, I don't need to worry about that. I'm just going to press go and I'm going to wait to have a conversation with the next person who's ready to talk to me. So, yeah. without further ado, man, let's get into it. Go ahead and let's press go. I'm going to press go on my end. Start ripping here. See if we can't have some live conversations. I've got a script that I will be using here. I'm a big fan of permission-based openers. What's your take on permission-based openers? I'm down with permission-based as well. Um, I think it's you can have a lot of different openers, but go with whatever works for you. But I think permission based works really well for me and my style. The thing that I talk about sometimes is uh, the golden rule, which is cold call in a way that you would want to be cold called. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How yeah. simple is that? Yeah. Try to go have a cold like call way that you would actually respond to. And I think if, if outbound sellers were to take the golden rule approach to everything they do with outbound, man, it would change the way that 99% of people are writing DMS writing emails, writing these big sequence campaigns of spray and pray. Hey, hey, this is Kevin. Brian, how you doing? Yeah, 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 Brian. Can you hear me? Awesome, awesome. Brian, sorry about that. I'm having a little phone trouble today. My name's Kevin. Uh, I'm with a company called HDG. I actually run and operate my own company. I'm complete interruption to your day. Do you have a second I can tell you why I'm calling? At the airport, where are you heading? Yeah, you know, Brian, we'll talk about it another time when you have time, uh, but I, I'll let you go. Bye. All right. I like that. So so give me give me an understanding and, and the people that are listening as well, why you didn't continue to, to push that guy for, uh, to, for your pitch. Yeah. So, um, ultra, ultra classic example here. My take on this is very different than a lot of the other gurus out there. And that's because I have, my argument is I have better process and I use better, I use tech better than 99% of the other types of folks that talk about this sort of stuff. Now, if someone is busy, they're still going to answer the, sometimes they still answer the phone. This guy, Brian, I could hear some background noise and he told me right away. He said, yeah, I'm, I'm pulling up to the airport. I'm going to the airport, right? And when I hear anything in the call that makes me, like gives me an opportunity, gives me like a little in to talk about something other than like work, business, money, sales, I will take that, right? So when I heard he's at the airport, yeah. I said, oh, where are you going? And then he stopped me and brought me back to, wait, 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 what's this about? What is this <clears throat> about? But he's about to go get on a, a flight, right? He's not, he's not in any mindset to talk about calling culture in his organization or outbound sales or anything like that, right? He, he just wants to know what I'm trying to sell him so he can tell me that he's all good, right? And yeah. it, in that yeah. little moment, in that, in that little three-second thing, a lot of SDRs will take that time to like word vomit all over the person. Yeah, I'm calling with XYZ Corporation and we have the greatest platform and we're in the Garden Magic Quadrant and I'd love to get your time to show it to you. Da, da, da. And the guy goes, hey, hey, hey. I appreciate you reaching out. We're not interested in that right now. I'm not looking yeah. for that right yeah. now. And then they hang up on you, right? And yeah. nothing yeah. to do with like your magic quadrant baloney stuff and what you got and all that. It has everything to do with the fact that this guy is just busy and he wants to know why you're calling in an effort to make like a smart decision about it. But I know better than he that he cannot make that <clears throat> determination right now, right? Yeah. So yeah. I, 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 I just say, Hey, all right, cool, Brian, you're, you're at the airport. I'll call you tomorrow. Peace. All right. That's what I, I like do. It. Yeah. 
They'll do the same. They'll do the same. I think I think the same way. He's got a lot of other things on his mind right now, and you're just one thing that he's is going to find it very easy to get rid of. Um, as opposed to actually hearing you for what you're saying and then being invested in that conversation. So I totally agree. Yep. Always want to meet people when they're ready to chat and not force the issue. Yeah. Was And I'm going to put me, this... Me, me, all me I have to do... All I have to do is put a little note here in Connect and Sell, click the day that I want to call him back, and it will keep, it yep. will call him back yep. for me on that day. Connect and Sell is like a so magic. Will, will you put that as a tomorrow follow-up, or will you put that as a couple of days? And, and also, how do you then prompt yourself for that next conversation? conversation? Yeah, great question. So I put it as a tomorrow follow-up, and the note is he was in the airport. So when I call him, it's not going to be the typical intro and then pitch and everything. I'm going to call him, remind him my name. It might ring a bell, might not. And I'm going to go immediately to, hey, you were in the airport last time I called. Hope, uh, obviously, your plane didn't crash. Where were you going? Were, are you on vacation? No way. Are you in, is that Bora Bora? Are you in Hawaii? Do I hear drums beating? Oh, no, you're in Denver for a tech conference. That's kind of boring. Anyways, <laughs> right? Just just have a conversation yeah. with him. Get him, get him thinking, oh, well. Yeah, this guy's cold calling me, but he's not a telemarketer. He's not someone who's just going to beg for my time. He's not trying to shove some product down my throat. Get him relaxed to the point where he wants to have a back and forth dialogue. That is my focus yeah. always. Yeah. Yeah. Spot on. Spot on. Spot on. Spot on. Hey, this is Kevin with HCG. Matt, how you doing? Fantastic. Matt, I know I'm an interruption here, catching you out of the blue on a Tuesday. You got a minute or are you uh, heads down on something else? Can't chat. Oh, man. That's, that's, that's tough. Anytime that someone picks up the phone, um, you think they can chat, but they can't. Well, Matt, uh, not a good moment to have an ambush call. I will reach out another day. Cheers. Another one. You see, guy, I, I can like also about, hear about. background noise, yeah. by the way. Yeah. You can also hear background noise. Uh, Mega, great question. Unfortunately, it is illegal for us to share both sides of the audio. Kind of like when you call into a radio show and they say, hey, by the way, you're live on the air. We, we don't take that step uh, because it's B2B and lawyers and stuff. So if you want to hear both sides of the audio, go check out up on calls, the podcast, and we do have both sides of the audio for most of these calls. So I'll drop a link to that. Um, hey, where's my pod link? Um, ba -ba 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 Podcast, pod link. Here it is. Nice. Okay. Here we go. Boop. I don't know if they can how see do you that. Think, how, do, how do you think, Kevin? I've got a question for you. How, how do you think that Connect and Sell will help reps that are on the phone daily um, that tend to feel that they struggle with cold calling? In what way do you think it will help? Well, great question. Um, if you're not using Connect and Sell or similar, then you're probably spending a lot of time doing things like, you know, typing numbers in or click to call. Click and, to dial. Um, yeah. So there, there's nothing wrong with click to call. There's nothing wrong with using a power dialer that goes one, then another, then another. Then hey, another. David. Yeah. Hey, David. Hey, David, uh, I know I'm an interruption. I'm going to be totally up front. We haven't spoken before. You've got 27 seconds, so I can tell you exactly the reason for my call. Hello, David. Hello, David. I think we've got we've been cut off there. Let me give him a call back. Call back. Oh, 
Hey, Dave. Hey, David. Sorry, I think we got cut off. Can you hear me okay? Oh, I've got the wrong number. This is not David Green at Sparta. No problem. I'll get that updated. Cheers, David. All righty. Dang, wrong number connect, huh? No, nothing like a wrong number to get you uh, to get you to get the blood pumping, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Did you call him back? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Love a little call back. So, uh, yeah, and I, I, that's one of the good things I think about the connect and sell feature. It's so easy to just quickly dial them back. Um, and I think that's imperative. If you get somebody who picks up the phone and they respond, and then something happens, they get cut off. You don't just move on. You go and get a. You go and find out how far you can get through that call, right? Uh, if I didn't go back, then he would have stayed in the system as somebody to call back another time. And then I would have just got the same answer, but later on. So I need to just qualify him now and now clean up the list and carry on. That's right. That's right. I'm a big fan. You know, uh, a lot of teams, the initial pushback, the first thing they say when they think about using dialing technology, like any dialing technology, you know, I, executives love to say, well, there's always a gap. There's always a delay. And that delay, anytime I hear that delay, I always hang up. That's why my team will never use a dialer. I'm like, okay, cool. So your team's stuck having two conversations a day for, you know, $150 worth of effort. Uh, <laughs> instead of having that attitude, the attitude should be, if the delay, if, they, if there happens to be a delay, which by the way, Connect and Sell actually owns patents in this space, I do believe. Don't tr don't check my math yeah, on that, but Connect and Sell crushes it when it comes to this sort of stuff. You get into live conversations quickly. And if someone does hang up before you can get to that actual person, call them right back. And the first thing you say will actually increase your conversation rate dramatically. And the first thing you say is, hey, I'm sorry. I've been having phone trouble today. I'm so, pff, that's the worst, right? And they immediately go, oh, uh, yeah, no, no worries. Wait, wh what was this about? Who are you? Wait, why are you in my ear talking about phone trouble? But what that does is it separates you dramatically from all the telemarketers, all the, you know, the, the uh, people overseas in the call center, you know, the 95% of spam calls that people get. When you talk about human stuff on cold calls, it immediately takes you out of that bucket and into the bucket of, oh, this is someone just like me. I should hear them out. Yeah. Yeah. And what we're doing is we're trying to level that playing field. And as soon as we can level the playing field with someone, we're decreasing the odds that they'll be rude to us on the phone. And when reps are, you know, on the receiving end of rude stuff, that's when they get really call reluctant. And you asked like with connect and sell, what, what, like, how is it going to change or how would it help a rep make calls? I think call reluctance is probably number one or number two problem out there. And the reluctance yeah. comes from a lot of different things. But what you want to do is you want to lower that effort and that reluctance from that moment that you go, okay, I'm going to call Antoine. And you go to click the button to call Antoine. And then you go, oh, it's 1 p.m. UK time. He probably just got back from lunch. I should give him time to digest. I'm going to go on LinkedIn and post about my day or look at some influencers post. And then about you know 30 minutes later, your alarm goes off and says, call Antoine. You go, okay, I'm going to call Antoine. I'm going to call Antoine. You go to press the button to call Antoine. You think... He's probably in a meeting. He's, pro you know, he's probably in a meeting. I don't want to be rude. I'm not a rude person. I would never interrupt someone in a meeting. You know, I'm going to take a yeah. lunch break yeah. of myself and I'm, I'll, I'll be back later. And I'm going to, and that's what happens. How do I know? Cause I've lived it. I did that as an SDR. I coach and train uh -huh. SDR teams. I see SDRs do this. You make up all these stories about people in your sales engagement platforms and on spreadsheets that get in the way of you just clicking it, go and having a live conversation with them. And it's because you don't have a good process, you probably don't have a good script, and you probably don't have technology that is making it effortless to just call, 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 call. So once yeah. again, people yeah. process in technology, it's a must. Antoine, here's, here's a good one. Mega's asking. Hey there, Sky. Uh, no, I'm an interruption. Um, I'm gonna be totally upfront. Um, I'm speaking with Sky, Sky Holt. 
Yeah, Sky, look, um, we haven't spoken before. If you've got 27 seconds, I can tell you exactly why I'm calling. Um, have you got a moment for me to chat? Um, so, as mentioned, it's, I'm calling from uh, Connect and Sell. Um, the, the reason for the call, Sky, is um, I believe that uh, we discovered a breakthrough which enables you to deliver sizable pipeline growth through your existing sales process without you needing to actually add in complex new sales processes or even adding much to your existing tech stack. Just wondering, in terms of your position over there, you're probably going to tell me everything's perfect, but the reason for my call was to see if you'd be open to learning a bit more about this. Um, so I've got you here as a BDM at uh, local media San Diego. Is that still correct? Where are you now? No, 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 that's, that's no problem. It's more to understand whether or not you are still in the same position of reaching out to people and prospecting on a daily basis. Ah, what does your role consist of now? <laughs> no problem, I'll update that. But based on where you're at now then, who would you say is probably a better person to speak to about this? All right, no problem. I appreciate that. Good to chat, and I'll take a look. Thank you very much. Cheers, bud. That was interesting. He's uh, no longer at that company. Yep. But he's a BDM somewhere else. So okay. I wanted to understand what it looks like in his company. He said he doesn't make any decisions at all. Um, it would be somebody else completely. He wasn't happy to give a referral. But that gives us an opportunity to dig in on LinkedIn, find out who the right person is, and then make another call into that right person. Right on, right on. I dig it. So Mega had a good question here that I want us to address. Um, what, what are your thoughts? How, how does how, how did you get so at ease? Um, just the more you do something, I think. And for me... Um, even I've, I've been running sales teams since 2012 and uh, I always used to say to all of my teams all you're doing is having a conversation the, the, the point of the call is to, to look for the conversation and to see what you can find out about people um, what position they're in, what they're doing and that should take some of the heat and the sting out of trying to get a specific outcome from the call if you get the right person on the phone and you connect and what you're talking about resonates, then you'll find your way to the meeting as long as you're following the right process. But I think detaching from the outcome is a, I know it's a cliche and a lot of people talk about it, but I think it's a really big part of how you can feel very comfortable on the phone talking to a stranger. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you touched on something there that you can't get around and this is part of what this shirt is all about, right? This is like, like imagine the 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 phone is a is a weight that you're lifting over your head right no one's going to lift the heavy weights but you a lot of people think that they can get good at cold calling by you know i, I just gotta I just gotta watch this youtube video and my cold calling will be figured out I, I just need someone to coach me on it or tell me how to do this and you know there's there's no substitute for the work there's no substitute for going out and having a lot of cold conversations with people and the, the, the way that you and I got to where we are, to where we know a lot about this, we can sell services around it, you know, sort of experts in the space, is not by reading a book or by, you know, listening to a podcast. Although I do want you to listen to my podcast and I do want to, you know, uh, I, it, it all helps. But I've also made hundreds of thousands of dials, hundreds of thousands of dials and set hundreds upon hundreds of meetings across various industries and all of that. Right. So once you do yeah. something so many times, it's just like riding a bike, you know what I mean? And I think that really is uh, it's, it's a bit of an X factor when you can make the shift from, you know, going to press go on your dialer, going to press call and your heart rate 
goes up to a uh, hundred beats per minute, 110 beats per minute. <laughs> and right now where if you were to look at this, I'm at, you know, low resting heart rate of like 70 something, just chilling. And I, I don't care. I'm going to press go over here, which I'm going to do while, while we're yapping. Um, I think another thing to, to add on to that, Kevin, is you've probably made so many cold calls now. You know what the worst of it is. And it's not, yeah, the, it's not, it's not the worst thing that could happen to you, right? It's not the world's end. Well end. So if you get a no... Hey, hey this is Kevin. HCG. Tina, how you doing? Yeah, my name's Kevin. Uh, Kevin Hop. I actually run my own company called Hop Consulting Group. We never met before, Tina. Got you out of the blue here. Do you have one minute? I'll explain exactly why I called, or are you uh, heads down doing something else? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. You, you dropped out there for a second. You said you have a few seconds. <laughs> Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate that, Tina. <clears throat> so, you know, what I do, I'm an independent consultant. I help uh, B2B technology teams develop a strong calling culture, uh, trying to reach out and have conversations with people that might be focused on how to improve the amount and the quality of outbound conversations they're having on a daily basis. Tina, is that, I, I figured that might be your part of your role. Right on. Do you have a team that's making outbound calls on a consistent basis? Awesome. Thanks, Tina. Cheers. Oh, man. So that, so that was actually a, a solid little intro into a conversation. Tina was hearing me out. You know what her, her objection was? Not sure. She works at Google. And she said, Hey, look, Kevin, totally respect the hustle. Like, love that you're calling. I work at Google. We have a ton of resources and we don't engage with anybody from the outside. And I'm like, I'm trying to think in my head, I'm like, how do I overcome the but Google should work with Hop Consulting? <laughs> like, like how, how do I pitch? Like, I know you guys have literally a trillion dollar market cap, but I'm sure there's something I could help you improve, <laughs> you know? And the truth yeah. is that there might yeah. be, but you know, she, she heard what I, I did and she has a team. She's on the, she's on the cloud team. So they do outbound, but um, apparently a, a, a large wealth of resources there for her. So a little bit outside my target market. I'm not sure how that leaked yeah. out of my list. Yeah. Google's a bit large. And I imagine when Google calls, there's not too many people that haven't heard of them or aren't up for taking the call. That's right. That's right. Well, I actually, you know, I don't know about you. I get a lot of... Hi there, this Robert. Um, I know I'm an interruption. I'm going to be totally up front. We haven't spoken before. If you've got 27 seconds, I can tell you exactly why I'm calling. Robert? I'll call him back. I don't think you can hear me. Uh, hey there, Robert. Can you hear me now? Um, so I, I just mentioned uh, that we haven't spoken before, um, but uh, you've got 27 seconds, and I'll tell you exactly the reason why I'm calling you today. I've got you here as the, the sales engineer and manager at Kofi. Is that still correct? That's still correct. I've got you here as a sales engineer and manager over at Kofi. Is that still correct? Yeah, the yeah. data that I have is it incorrect? Looks like I'm going to have to have some words with my data team then. Robert, before you shoot off, where are you now? Where are you? Uh, 
as, so, as mentioned, uh, it's mentioned from Connect and Sell, the name's Antoine. Um, are, are you responsible in any way for the sales team? Uh, connect, connect and Sell. Is it because of my accent? My accent. Uh, connect, uh, connect and sell. And sell. Yeah. Yeah. Have that before? Have that before? Uh, so we have a data That's team, we have access team, to the number of different of data platforms, platforms and your number would have come from one of those, those. publicly available information. Um, it sounds yeah, like I've made a like point on a bad line. I'm not quite sure why that, that matters so much, Robert. Uh, it sounds like I've caught you with a bit of a bad line. <laughs> oh, man. So. I, 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 it sounds like it sounds like I've put you a bit of a bad time, Robert. And so what I'll do it's a great time. So my name is Antoine. I'm calling from Connect and Cell. And I wanted to discuss a breakthrough with you in relation to I'm still I'm still trying to understand what <laughs> why you're asking me this question. <laughs> You sound like the police. I've never been complimented on that before, but I do thank you. Robert. You too. Take care. Have a good one. <laughs> Robert wasn't too happy about his numbers being called. Well, that was a. This is this is one of the most, most classic, classic. You know, not really objections, but if you're if you're making cold calls you're hearing this. So you had an interesting, you had an interesting way that you went about this. And I would actually coach reps to do it very similarly to what you did, right? Where'd you get this number? I don't know you. And it's like, it's, it's like 2023, right? Like people, if you have ever sent an email, literally ever with your cell phone number in the email, in your email signature, it is in a database. Everybody has it. Just admit that every, like, just know that, right? I wish that, you know, there could be a PSA. They put it in Times Square on all the billboards, all the digital billboards, you know, <laughs> just say like, everyone has your cell phone number. Don't be surprised. This guy was being a bit of a bully about it, right? Mm -hmm. He kept pushing you to, to do that. But you did what I coach reps to do, which is to give him a direct answer and then immediately try to pull him back to the reason for the call. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Give him a direct answer. Come back to the call. Now, here's another line. Here's another line out there for, for the folks listening. If you get this, try this one. And this one takes a very confident tone. But the line is, yeah, I actually had uh, my assistant give me this number. I, he might have gotten some bad information. Is this the right number for you? And when they hear that you have an assistant, they kind of go, whoa, 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 your assistant? Their, their curiosity it tends to make the, the, the brain spin a little bit. And then you pull, hmm. yeah, I, I had my assistant, you know, give me this number. Is there a better number to reach you? I, it sounds like I got you on the right number. And they go, no, I guess I'm just curious how they got it. And you say, ah, well, either way, you know, reason for my call is. The reason for my call is, that's actually why I was calling. Let's talk about this. Megan's got another question here. How long should you speak for when the prospect actually gives you time to talk? Talk speed is fast is and long. Question. Yeah, great question. So, Mega, this is uh, this is something that if you ask if you ask uh, ten different you know influencers out there, you probably get nine different responses. Antoine, what's your take on this? Um, so. Uh, Obviously, you hear me um, pitching on behalf of Connect and Sell today, and they've got you know a 27 second opener. Um, my own opener is, is, is you know if you've got a minute, um, and the reason that I do that is because it gives me a minute to get my uh, you know my kind of proposition across, and then shut up. Um, so it kind of gives you a time limit 
Uh, you, you you manage the, the problem statements or however you approach the call within that time limit, and then you hand it over to your customers and you just find out from them what they thought of that opening, either asking them a question as to what they're most experiencing or whether or not they'd like to take the conversation further. And I think another little element to that is to acknowledge the time limit. So when, once you get to the end of your 60 seconds or your 30 seconds, actually tell people that, look, um, I've had my 27 seconds or I've had my 30 seconds. Are you happy to continue or should we end up here? Yeah. And I think that just adds another little note of um, curiosity about the person that's on the other end of the phone is not a typical salesperson, but is actually respectful of their time and is ready to engage in a conversation where they can manage their time in a way that they can make a seat for them. What about you, Kevin? Love that. Love that. So, Mega, the way that I think about this is the biggest gap between where your prospect is today and what they can learn about what you're doing in the business problems, valuable solutions, everything you sell is context, right? So, I'm a big fan of trying to give people context as to why me, why now, why my business, why would I reach out to that person at that time? So, I build my scripts in that way, right? So, if you notice when I'm pitching Hop Consulting Group, I say, Hey, I work with people like you. I work with B2B sales teams to help them do this. So you, you lay out who you help and what you do for them. And you got to have a question. I'm a big fan of a question, right? Uh, yeah. Have a question yeah. that asks about a business process, a business challenge. You, you flip the table and say, hey, here's what I do, but enough about me. Let's talk about you. I got to talk about you because I'm not going to push getting a demo you know, setting a next step, da, 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 da. If I can't align a business challenge that you have or get you get you interested in something that I might offer, right? I, I always make sure to, to say that there are really two reasons why we should set meetings, to talk about a business challenge or to talk about a valuable potential solution, but we might not identify the challenge on a cold call. There's a lot of people out there that will not admit how awful their organization is on a cold call, Right. But Antoine, if people had, if everybody was all set and no one had any problems, you and I would never make any money, right? Like sales wouldn't sure. exist. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Salespeople exist because most people don't understand how bad their problems are and that there are solutions out there. So context is king. Eddie, my man, good to see you on the show. Congratulations. I think Eddie just got a job too. Good stuff. All right, I am back in the queue. Let's get someone to chop it up besides somebody who works at Google. Hello. <laughs> oh, Google. Hey, this is Kevin with HCG. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Fantastic. Look, I'm calling you out of the blue. I apologize about that. Some people might call it a cold call. Ah, do you have uh, 30 seconds? I'll tell you why I called and then we can determine whether or not it makes sense to talk. No, I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> I just don't. Uh, look, totally get it. I'll reach out another day, Trudy. Cheers. Okay, bye. Bye. Come on. Come on, people. Some, Some days are like that, man. Come on, people. She was busy. She said, no, I don't. I, I don't have time for this. She was on the next one. Yep. Two clicks in Connect and Sell and I am back in the queue trying to find other people to talk to. So this what, is... Um, what, do you, what do you subscribe to, Kevin, when people ask you the best times of the day to call? Early and often. Early and often. Uh, always. People, people say when's the best time to call. I generally find that people asking for like, you know, Kevin, what's the secret? Tell me when to call. It's code for tell me when I can have an excuse not to call. <laughs> that's, 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 that's seriously what people are saying, right? Um, depending on your market, there could be various times that are going to be better than others. Uh, some of the rules that I follow that other gurus don't, like I only call people about business during business hours. Some people say, I get all my best connects before 8 a.m. Or like, 
catch him in the car on the way home. And like, I, I hate that because if you call me when I'm with my daughter and my wife, I, I immediately say like, no, I, right now it's not a time to talk to you about this. It's work stuff. Call mm -hmm. me tomorrow at 10 AM business hours. Right. I don't call on the weekends. I don't call after hours. That's just me. Hey, this is Kevin with HCG. Season, how are you? Yeah, my name is Kevin Hop. I actually run my own company called Hop Consulting Group. Not sure if you've seen me on LinkedIn or not, but uh, I know I caught you out of the blue here. You got a minute or are you uh, heads down something else? Right on. So I, I work uh, specifically with B2B technology companies. I see you're over there at Zoom Info. Is that still accurate? Awesome. Awesome. So I know at Zoom Info, you guys are banging phones. Do you have a team of reps that are hitting phones on a daily basis? Oh, man. Do they all roll up to you? Right on. That's got to be a, you know, a tech stack to support 500 outbound reps. It's got to be a little unwieldy, huh? I believe that. Well, so I guess the, the question I have for you, considering you're no longer in like frontline leadership here. Um, if you were me, I, I, I've done uh, training engagements with very large SDR orgs to help their SDRs do better on the phone, have a real plan, get into a lot of conversations. Who do you think I should have that conversation with? Do you guys have a phone champion at Zoom Info? Is there someone who like says like, you know, here's the way we're cold calling and and you know really riles the team up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. No, it makes total sense. Okay. I'm actually connected with a few folks that you mentioned. Uh, might slide into their DM and I'll, I'll name drop, but I'm not going to say you recommended that I reached out. That, that'll, that'll be our little secret. What, is, is that okay with you? I love that. They might respect if I lead with that too. If I say, hey, you know, Thiessen said this might be a dead end, but I, I, I wanted to reach out anyways. You guys do internal? Uh, I, yeah, I do training. Okay. 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 Awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, chatting up with me. I do appreciate it. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you go and you have a great rest of your day. And best part is you didn't have to ask. You didn't ask. You weren't like, Hey, how'd you find my number? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. Tyson, I'll let you go. Cheers. Ooh, wow. That was a long one. Sorry for everybody here. Doesn't make for a good, doesn't make for a good uh, live show when the prospect goes on and on and on and on. Um, I caught Tyson. He works at Zoom Info, uh, big org, and he was telling me all about their structure. Five hundred reps, dude. Can you imagine five hundred SDRs? That's insane. That's insane. That's a little. It's a little large. And I've got some big fish on this list. But he name drops some folks. Who knows? I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go see what's up. I'm going to go see what's up. Here's another question from Steve Burnside. What information shows up on local number and what name? Hey, this is Kevin with uh, HCG. Leslie, how are you? Fantastic. I know I caught you out of the blue here. Did I catch you with a second to have a cold conversation or are you, uh, are you busy? Oh, in the grocery store. Well, if uh, if you have a second, I'll tell you why I'm reaching out. Um, Leslie, I... Okay. That was really weird. So Leslie said she was she was available, said she's in the grocery store. And then when I said, when I, that, that last line, she said, yeah, just call me back another time and hung up on me. <laughs> Whatever, whatever. You never know what you never know what prospects are going to do, right? You never know what. No, you never do. know. Uh, so, so there, 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 were, there were two questions. There were two questions. There was one from Mega, which was just asking um, about the, the, the context. Um, the question you ask after giving context, which I, I think was what you were talking about, and then for Steve's question, which I'll answer now, Steve. Um, you get you get the, you get the name the name of the person in this company. Company. Um, you give you their LinkedIn profile and their URL, web URL. You're looking for that because you actually own the person. So you can kind of do your research and your research. Um, not all lists have to be particularly research because you are doing obviously account based. Um, but uh, yeah, that that gives you a snippet of the information that you see and any notes from. The, the contact yeah. so if Anton, I'll be able to see. I think Steve's asking when connecting cells calling out. Oh, I right? see. Oh, I so, see. like we're we're buzzing people's phones. Yeah. Um, I, I think the uh, the short answer is it will show up as a clean number. It's not always local ID. Clean number meaning it won't say spam likely. It won't say telemarketer under it, or it shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, but Connect and Sell does a lot of work on the back end to try and make sure that the numbers, the ideas that you're calling from, show up as clean numbers. Yeah. Uh, and it, Connect and Sell, unlike some of the other dialing platforms out there, does a really good job of handling that for the rep. And it almost like I've made freaking I've made over five hundred thousand calls, probably two hundred thousand of them on Connect and Sell in the last six years. And I've never had a prospect say, this number, duh, 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 duh. like, how do, is this your real number? Or duh, duh, duh. Like, no one ever, they, they never uh, mention it. So that's just anecdotal evidence. But I um, hope that helps, Steve. Uh, Mega, what's the question you ask after giving context? That's a great, great point to clarify. You ask a question about their business. Right. So when they say, go ahead, pitch, you need to tell them who are you and why you're calling. Right. Give the context. Here's what I do. Here's who I serve. What's going on in your business? Something about them. I can't tell you what that question is because I don't know what you're selling. I, I don't know the business problems that you're looking for, but you should think of everything that you do in terms of what what problems can I uncover? What ways can I help this person? And if you start to think about that, the first thing you say to yourself is, well, I don't know. I don't know if they have a problem. I don't know if they need help with this, 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 or this. I don't know what their business process is currently to do X, Y, or Z, right? 
And this is an important part of the context because now they say, so imagine you're selling Zoom Info, right? It, that's a really easy one to talk about how to pitch Zoom Info. You'd say, hey, I work, I, I'm, I'm with Zoom Info. We provide B2B data, contact data for you know 95% of the known world. <laughs> what, what does it look like currently at your business when it comes to finding B2B contact data? You want them to talk about their process. You want them to say, oh, yeah, we got seamless AI and it works sometimes. Oh, yeah, I got lead IQ. Oh, yeah, I got da, 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 whatever it is, right? And then you can start to get into why you're better, different, not the same. Because at the end of the day, they don't understand how you're better, different, not the same. Hope that makes sense. Antoine, you agree? Yeah, very well on yeah. yeah, I agree. I dig it. I dig it. Well, let's see if we can't get a meeting here, man. I'm back in the queue. Um, I'm in the queue. I've been in the queue. Um, yeah, I see Eddie's, Eddie's head is spinning, just like mine. <laughs> that would be a lot of uh, a lot of cats to herd. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is Kevin with HCG. How you doing today? I'm all right, but look, uh, Rob, caught you out of the blue here on a Tuesday. Do you have a second? I can explain exactly why I'm calling, or is now not a good time to talk. Yep. Okay. All right, Rob. I'll call and have a uh, cool conversation with you another time. Cheers. You guessed it. Not a good time to talk. So, so when you have people that say you shouldn't ask for permission, you should just go in there and steamroll people, tell them that you're going to be brief and say what it is you're going to say anyway. What kind of impact do you think that would have on some of the conversations that you've had today where people have said, no, not the time, no, not the time? Yeah. So when you pitch people when they're not ready to talk, I call this phenomenon the false negative. So what you're going to get when you pitch someone who's not ready to talk is I'm not interested. We're all set. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the call. Take me off your list. Now I have not heard any one of those three things today. I talked to seven people, eight people in less than an hour. Haven't heard any of those. And if you're an SDR watching and you are hearing those things, it's because those are all the, the general brush off of I'm busy, I can't talk right now, but they hear your pitch and they just throw the, the canned, hey, uh, whatever, you're, whatever you're calling about, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm not interested. Right? And I loathe when people do that. So I'm so heavy on the, do you have a minute to talk? And guess what? I can do that because I have process and technology and you should have process and technology too, right? Meaning I called Rob. I talked to Rob. He said, he's busy. He stays in my list tomorrow. I'm going to press go on the list. Rob's in there, right? Like you, consistency. I get it. If, if, uh, you know, part of the reason that SDRs get slammed on a lot and they get a lot of the not interested, take me off your list, you know, da, da, da is because they put so much emphasis on every conversation because they only get one or two a day. They're calling, 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 calling. And I get one conversation. Go, oh my gosh, Antoine, I've been meaning to talk to you all day. I work at, at ABC Corp and we do the greatest stuff. And I can't wait to get 20 minutes of your time to show you what we got. And then Antoine goes, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I I'm set. I'm all set. Take me off your list. Boop. And the SDR has this ego death moment. Uh... And then, you know, this is why we drink, right? <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> it's a tough moment. It's tough. It's, it's, a, it's a tough L. You know what I mean? Carrie, good point. I'm going to call you again yeah. to have a cool conversation. I'm a big fan of telling people that I'm going to call back. I have done that before. And folks will rethink their busyness right away. Because they, they think that if they tell you to, you know, kick rocks, you're never coming back. Because most people don't follow up. What they don't know about me is I have process structure and technology. I'm going to follow up. So when you tell them that, sometimes they stop what they're doing. They say, okay, well, hold on. I, I got a minute. What, what's this about really? And they're leaning forward. I like that. I like when they're leaning forward. I like when they're saying, what is this about? 
right? Hi there, Sahil. The um, I know I'm an interruption. I'm going to be totally up front. We haven't spoken before. If you've got 27 seconds, can I tell you exactly the reason for my call? Seal? Yeah, perfect. So, Sahil, um, I believe we've discovered a breakthrough which enables you to deliver a sizable pipeline growth through your existing sales process without needing to add in complex new sales processes or even add in much to your existing tech stack. You're probably going to tell me everything's perfect, but the reason for my call is to see if you'd be open to learning a bit more about this. Okay. Okay, cool. And look, Sahil, I originally asked for, for 27 seconds. I'm already uh, over that point. Are you, are you okay to speak a little bit further? Okay, great. Um, so, so Sahil, what, what does that look like for you today when you mentioned about, you know, the sales team and, and, and those calls that they're making? What, what, what does that kind of look like and, and how are those conversations sounding? Okay. Do you mind me asking what you're using today? Okay. So it, so it, 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 is, is it actually you that, that, that kind of is responsible for that or would it, would it be somebody else in the organization that would really be looking at how the team are running their technology and how they can be more efficient in the mission? Okay. Okay. Who would you suggest I, I reach out to? Okay. All right, perfect. And is that somebody that you, you have a close relationship with? Do you speak to them on a regular or a daily basis? Okay, so from, from your perspective, what would you say would be the best way to approach them? Would it be a cold call like the one you've received today? Would it be a... Call an email. <laughs> how, how do you think it would be best to uh, receive? Okay, cool. That sounds good. Um, do you mind if I'm just a little bit cheeky here? <laughs> would you have a, a number for me to reach them on? Just me between me and you. Okay. If if not that, would a would a warm introduction be uh, too far out of question? Okay. Awesome. All right. Good stuff. Um, so so yeah. What, what, what's, um, what, what's the email that I need? I need to send over um, my my info and then for you to connect us if that would work well with you. Okay, great. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you spell that one more time, please? Okay, perfect. All right, lovely. Look, it's, it's been a, a, a pretty good time, and I will um, be in touch. And um, I look forward to uh, obviously, you know, being referred in. Awesome. Thanks, Hill. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Good little referral. Yeah.
Nice. A buzzer beater referral. I love that. I love that, man. Well, Antoine, we've reached the end of our time here. Thank you so much for joining Hop on Calls, powered by Connect and Sell. How can people connect with you? How can people learn from you? How can people get stuff from you? Um, so I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I post often, so you can find me, Antoine Marsden, that's M-A-R-S-D-E-N. Um, I talk about cold calling and outbound prospecting and everything sales pretty much every day. So hit me up. Love that. Well, Antoine, thanks again for coming on the show. Big shout out to our sponsor, Connect and Sell, our live conversation weapon. To everybody out there, keep making your calls and I will see you in two weeks live on Hop On Calls.